cross-examination. Okay, all right, here we go. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. Now we get the anti-wizard. Let me ask you, let's start with what you finished with. I'm sorry, one more time? Let's start <laughs> oh, with what you finished shit. With. You understand that the court was twice asked by Ms. Hurd's counsel to order a medical exam of Mr. Depp, and those motions were denied. I think the the your team uh -oh. told uh, the court you didn't want to have them, and the court uh, uh, ruled them. Uh, I don't uh, think the court proactively <laughs> did it. You kind of had a motion to them, right? No. When uh -huh. Hurd's lawyers moved for them uh -huh. and asked for them and did not get them. Yeah. Isn't that right, sir? If if you're saying that's what happened, my understanding of was that you oh did my not want God. to undergo one. They petitioned for oh it. Oh, my God. Said, yes, that's what my understanding of it was. The court said no to ordering Mr. Depp to do the medical mm -hmm. exam. Right, that's, I said the court did not require it, right. And there was one that was ordered, in fact, right? There was. Uh, All right. Uh, okay, yeah, there it is. He's going too hard on him, man. Holy shit. How long is this going to go on for? Wow, he's so aggressive. Yeah, I mean, this guy, as I said, he doesn't fuck around with wizards. He doesn't give a fuck about wizards. <laughs> Just destroys right, him. So, the last thing you talked about uh, <laughs> oh my was God. the Goldwater rule. He's stacking sunders. Yes, sir. Been around for almost 50 years, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm 59. That sounds about right. Yeah. And it's been around as a result of... A presidential election that you referenced yes uh -huh. and who has that rule what organization uh, maintains that rule it, the american psychiatric association. the one you're part of uh, an association you're a member of oh. associated not a member of yes oh. aren't you a fellow or something is it, yes i am oh. okay. so and this is an ethical rule right it is an uh. ethical rule and yes, it's ethical. They say rules. It's an ethical guideline. Yes, the it's guidance. a guideline. Mm -hmm. and it's not a rule. It's a guideline. We know that over time, the American Psychiatric Association has amended the rule. So it's not just about diagnoses, but it's also about professional opinions. Could you be more specific? Say about professional oh, opinion in no. regards to what? Well, oh, no. let me. It, let me read this and see if you're familiar with it. Oh, the wizard. Oh, it is no. unethical for a psychiatrist to offer a professional opinion about an individual uh -huh. based on publicly available information without conducting an examination. That's uh -huh. the rule, right? If you're reading it directly, I will believe you. Okay. Okay. It, it's got all the sunders up. However, a diagnosis is not required for an opinion to be professional. So my question is, it's not just diagnosis that this Goldwater rule applies to, it's professional opinions. So again, I, I will reiterate that that oh. would come down to essentially nullifying uh -huh. witness testimony, expert witness testimony, without a direct evaluation. And as we know, it didn't happen, but regardless of that, the whole expert witness testimony thing would be the thing. basically Render null, bullet, null and void. The rule, in fact, contemplates that issue, doesn't it, sir? The, again, I'm just telling you the answer to the question. When you're reading me those statements, oh god, I'm here you we go. The response by the here other side, who publishes also, is that if that was the case, there could be no expert witness testimony in the courtroom. Psychiatrists are ethically prohibited from evaluating individuals. Without, permit, without permission or other authorization such as a court order. That's the rule, right? Again, if you're reading that, then I have to... God. Oh, God. And I would come back to you again. Oh, no. This whole thing on expert... We might as well get rid of all the expert witnesses we've had throughout all of time for court proceedings. It gets paid by the hour. Is unless a court orders it, and that's what you just said, or the APA said, then therefore expert witnesses cannot do an evaluation based on an observation of the medical records. Insurance companies cannot do evaluations solely based on the medical records. Now record, he's talking. Just rendering professional opinions. Don't let him keep casting. So at the end of the day, you are essentially saying that unless someone has directly evaluated it, 
there, this whole medical system we oh, have. Oh, he's mad. Yeah, he's mad. Is null and void. I, I, I'm not saying. No, yes, you are, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Give me a give me a second, and I'll, I'll okay. give you. Spell more reflect. Things. Okay. What, what I'm <laughs> saying and what I am reading to you yes. is a rule by your organization uh -huh. that takes into account that there could be court orders that would permit the, the exact kind of evaluation that you say I'm eliminating. And I think we're going in circles because I think I just said that means uh -oh. expert witness testimony would not be allowed and the branch of forensic psychiatry mm -hmm. would be especially hindered and we know the branch of forensic psychiatry does not prohibit that so i am a member of the apa that doesn't necessarily mean every single thing they put in there everybody has to uncategorically agree with because clearly that's not the case did you agree in your deposition that the the professional opinions you, you rendered were uh, inconsistent with the goldwater rule yeah my first is inconsistent. If we're saying that I, if the gold war rule says, and I very much said that during deposition, that oh, the gold no. war rule was made for presidents and public figures such as that, but regardless of that, because that's what it was made for. Oh, no. It was not no. made for Hollywood, but I'll even take that, Mr. Depp's a public figure. Oh, oh my, obviously. What I'm saying to you is that the gold war rule is saying we cannot do any expert witness testimony in our field. That is exactly what. Uh -huh. The rule is saying based on exactly what you read. And I'm just telling you what you are saying that rule encompasses. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking you, sir, is Ooh, did you God, they comply fucking hate each other. with the ethical requirements did you comply? of the APA when, refer when rendering the professional opinions oh my God. that you've rendered today? It is this a, is the execute. It is a requirement of the APA. It is not the requirement of the APA. Secondarily, So the again, answer is no? Secondarily, oh. secondarily, secondarily. Oh, they're again, getting mad. In order to not... Yes. You, we, we waste our whole morning because there was an expert witness before me. There's an expert uh -huh. witness is everyone brought in. So all I'm saying to you, that means the whole field of medical legal law is corrupt and unethical for engaging in an act that the APA clearly says he's going on should not do. So if you're saying that, then the answer is yes, I'm agreeing with that statement. You're agreeing that the APA would deem your t testimony and your professional opinions rendered unethical. I, again, I am saying you are saying that the whole I'm an expert witness. Flag I'm boy. Oh as my an expert god. Witness, and solely as an expert witness. Oh no. The, that guideline is permitting that from Jesus occurring. Christ. I would say then that the whole field of expert witness testimony this guy, again would the be wizard, disavowed <laughs> by destroyer. what you are quoting in the gold order and we know that's not the case. Because if it was, we would not be allowed to do it. And you said the rule was for presidents, right? No. That was initially for presidents, yes. But, and the name of the rule came from that. Well, it wasn't The rule says it is yes. unethical for a psychiatrist to offer a professional opinion about an individual. That's right, mm -hmm. sir. It's not just presidents. It's not public figures. It's individuals. Ah. Funny, it was named after the... According to your logic, if you don't put something in the title, it's not true. That's what you oh my God! Intimate partner violence. They're so talking what shit I would say now. To you then, sir, he's talking big shit. Is that he's if you say this about again? an individual again? Yes. Any court would have to render an expert witness testimony invalid. Any doctor that reviews charts would have to oh render my it God. invalid. I can go on the list of docs that do not see or interview patients directly, and that's a violation. So basically, you oh are my saying God. That I unless love you this. do a direct clinical evaluation then all of the field of forensic psychiatry and all of uh, oh, managed boy. care is doing an unethical violation because we are not seeing the presence. We deny patients medications all the time without seeing them. We deny patients treatments, unfortunately, without seeing them. And I'm on the receiving end of that. So the answer to your question, again, unless you were yeah, saying we, uh, that all of this we heard is about unethical, that. which is what you were saying. This is what you were we heard about I'm that. interpreting what you were saying to me. That unless you do the evaluation directly yourself, 
Therefore, it could not be considered ethical. And uh-huh. I'm telling you how that applicable to not just expert law, but also managed care, it applicable to multiple branches of medicine. Hospital, duration of hospitalization stay, they get evaluated. So tell me, tell me where you want me to end this. Well, sir. Uh, why don't we, <laughs> sir. Why don't we, why don't we talk about what he's so mad. I to. love this. I didn't ask you anything about that. I asked you whether under this rubric, under this principle of medical He's going to make him say it. Have you acted unethically? Yes, uh, he's going to make him say no. it. As an expert witness, I have not acted unethically. And if you want now he's going to say as a psychiatrist, expert witnesses are unethical. Then I guess that's for them well, to decide. That's, yes, that's or no, for them sir. to decide. Said no. Let's go to the next question. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. Psychiatric diagnosis occurs in the context of Jesus. an evaluation based on thorough history taking, examination, mm-hmm. and where applicable collating. John is so happy. Look at his collateral face. information. Like, yeah, fuck you. Agree you. With that. I believe I said that earlier. Fuck yes. you. And it's a departure from the method, from the Dick. methods of the profession to render an opinion without an examination oh. and without conducting an evaluation oh. in accordance with the standards of psychiatric practice, mm-hmm. correct? Well, again, it, by the way, for the record, work, intimate partner violence is not a psychiatric diagnosis. I'll start with that. Substance usage by themselves is not a psychiatric diagnosis. If you want to cut to the chase, psychiatric use is not a diagnosis. Uh-huh. Narcissistic personality traits is not a diagnosis. Ergo, I am basically commenting on the things that were brought to me, which are not diagnosis. But an, but an evaluation, if I was going to treat a patient or anyone here, those are the steps I would take. We, I think, started with the notion that this rule applies broader than diagnoses. It applies to professional opinions. I believe you, you just quoted prof- the- Professional opinion Interrupt. Relative, relative to narcissistic <laughs> personality traits. Have you so oh, shit. Mr. Depp? Again, just talking I right over him. You just commented on what it takes to do in a psychiatric evaluation to establish a diagnosis. I'm almost certain that's what you said. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you didn't say that. But I'm sure Bro, you did. I love this. And this is great. what I'm saying is neither IPV, nor substance usage, nor narcissistic personality like traits, a up. psychiatric diagnosis. So, and so, then under the rubric of expert witness testimony, you are saying I acted unethically on the rubric of expert witness testimony. So if you, sir, would like to proceed that expert witnesses uh, are unethical, based on that, I am not going to sit here and disagree with you and waste everyone's time. I think it's fairly obvious. So thank you. I'll go ahead. The thank you. These were your words. I'm just saying them back how they're Uh-oh. Interpreted. Okay. Um, Let's start with the easy question then. Maybe we can. That was pretty easy. Go ahead. All right, yeah. Doctor, you're going to have to just answer the questions. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm getting into it. You, you need to just answer the questions, okay. Doctor. <laughs> She's like, calm you down. I'm not rendering any diagnosis <laughs> like getting, I'm getting whatsoever into it. of Mr. Depp. I love this. Today or ever. This is great. He's molding, yeah. No, I probably would say to you that certainly I would not molding. say narcissistic personalities or I would say traits. Certainly from what mm-hmm. I have read, intimate partner violence is not a diagnosis. So the answer is no right. for that. Uh, narcissistic personality traits is not a diagnosis. The answer is no. But if you want to tell me that substance use disorder is a psychiatric diagnosis, the answer is yes. And I. But that wasn't an issue, was it? Whether Mr. Uh-huh. Uh, Mr. Depp used substances. I mean, you said you've gone through the record. That that wasn't really an issue at this trial. He yeah. said it from day one. Oh, so you're saying he's already admitted to the diagnosis? He's so, already admitted to the yeah. use of the substances. Oh, yeah, we know this. Well, again, there's a difference between admitting to substance use and substance use disorder. Let's go back to oh. uh, what you just said about a disorder yeah is a disorder traits. a diagnosis yes. aren't isn't that exactly what you're thinking personality disorder is a dsm-5 diagnosis ah. correct correct Diagnos- diagnostic personality and you haven't testified that Mr. this Depp might be a spell reflect um narcissistic personality disorder have you I would certainly, if I didn't, I'm certainly thinking that, but at least I'm going to say he has traits, which are characteristics uh, of downplay provisional it. diagnosis. Of, downplay it's it. It's a provisional diagnosis of probably narcissistic personality. Oh. But yeah, I mean, I do believe that. 
Well, when you say provisional diagnosis, you know the DSM-5 requires, in order to find that diagnosis, you have to talk to five them. of the nine factors. Mm -hmm. And you haven't done that analysis. You've never made that diagnosis. <laughs> You've just identified certain factors. <laughs> Oh my God! That are criteria for the diagnosis, right? But yeah. you need five of nine to get to the diagnosis. You've you've already told us that you didn't make a diagnosis. Oh my God! You're just ide identifying traits, correct? I'm identifying traits that are consistent with the diagnosis. Yes. Uh huh. Right. And you, you, did you testify in deposition mm -hmm. that the existence of traits, as opposed to the disorder, ah, uh. doesn't have a correlation with IPV? Uh, I, if I said traits do not have a correlation with the, if that's what I said, and I don't remember saying that, but that wouldn't be a correct saying. Narcissism has a correlation with the diagnosis. Yes, that part's uh -huh. true. All right, how far are we gonna back this up? Because there's a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. Diagnosis. Right? Yes, sir. And that one is type, has some correlation with IPV, right? Mm -hmm. Narcissism has correlation with IP. Again, you, sir, I'm, you're not allowed to answer. Oh, we're not. I'm, uh, you're splitting hairs. Here we go. You're splitting hairs between the, the judge is going to have to come in with, soon. All I'm commenting on. Yep, they're is getting mad. And traits that are consistent with the diagnosis and Mr. Depp. Narcissism absolutely has uh, risk factors associated with IPV. Let's go back again, and, and maybe we can. We can focus on the question I ask you, and we can get an answer yeah. that's addressed to that question. Mm -hmm. Narcissistic personality disorder is a risk factor for IPV, yes or no? Yes. And you previously testified there, it, that there is no literature at which you are currently aware that the mere presence of narcissistic traits is a risk factor for IPV. Am I answering the question? Yes. That's incorrect. Cluster. You didn't testify to that. A cluster. Oh, boy. Cluster B oh, traits. Oh, boy. Which narcissistic personality disorder is part of is a huge risk factor. Oh, my for God. Intimate partner violence, which include. Uh huh. Cluster B traits include narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, mm -hmm. amongst others. So the answer to the question is every, every resource on intimate partner violence. Will support, will support that cluster B traits where narcissistic personality falls under is a risk factor for intimate partner violence. Any single trait under is a risk factor for IPV. Oh God. Again, I will Any repeat, single one. Cluster B traits. Oh God. I didn't say any trait, I said cluster. Oh my God. No, oh, let, said, me be, let, let me be more precise. Uh, interrupt, let's go. Okay. Any narcissistic trait in and of itself is a risk factor for IPV. He's going to make him say no. But you are mischaracterizing what I said. Of course what he I is. Said, I, I'm pretty sure He's the I wizard said, destroyer. Cluster, if you look at all the intimate That's what he does. violence literature, and I would behoove you to do so, you will see oh, that God. cluster He's got to get that in there. Traits. I didn't say narcissistic personality. Oh my God. Cluster B traits, where narcissistic personality disorder is part of, are risk factors for intimate partner violence, mm -hmm. part and parcel uniformly true. And I'm not sure, I, the thing I don't understand is, oh, I'm not sure why we're we arguing psychiatry, because I'm telling you what it is. Dr. Siegel, you just need to answer the question. I so told you she was going to have to come in uh, soon. Cluster B, so let's do that for a minute. <laughs> I told you she was, he was getting revved up. Personality disorder is a risk fa factor yep. for IPV. As part of cluster B traits, yes. Mm -hmm. Histrionic personality disorder is a risk factor for IPV. Uh -oh. Less so. But it, less so. It's good. Less so. It's I mean, it's a risk factor, but less so, yes. Yeah. Less so. Significantly less so. All right. Ah. So, He's, which he, traits? He saw where he was going. Under narcissistic. Oh, and bef before I move on there, there's only been one diagnosis in court of personality disorders, correct? In this court. I'm not sure who you're referring to. 
Are you referring to Mr. Depp? Ms. Hurt? Who, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Do you understand that there was a medical examination done of Ms. Hurt? Yes, I did. Do you understand uh. that the testimony was ultimately that Ms. Hurd suffers from two personality disorders. Okay, so I'm, I'm just being specific. I just wanted to know if you're talking about Ms. Hurd or Mr. Depp. So that was just okay. all I was asking you. Yes or no to my question. Uh, Which was his only one diagnosis of... Ms. Hurd was diagnosed with that. Yeah, and both of the diagnoses are in cluster B, and both of them are risk factors for IPV. But... but both those spell cluster reflect. B things are. I'm not, I'm not fucking comment spell on reflect. Tests, therefore, holy all I can shit! Say is that cluster B traits, and I'll tell you what they are. And by the way, I, I, I testified this before. Oh my god! That, one, I don't expect perfection from my victims. Two, I don't, absolutely, I don't, I don't expect B perfection. Sure absolutely, straight ahead. Already really conceding the loss. Before, let's move on to a new question. Okay. Okay. All right. You indicated. In your Jesus. opinion today, that you thought, oh, well, why don't we, why don't we move a little differently? Are you a member of the American Medical oh. Association? No. Okay, so you don't know what the ethical rule of the American Medical Association is relative to doing um, clinical diagnoses oh about my God. you've never talked to. So you're saying in terms of doing expert witness evaluations under that rubric, right? Uh oh! I'm just asking you: Do you know the AMA's rule? Do, under doing, you're saying the a, AMA's ruling under the rubric of not oh doing that something you did not see, and I'm and yeah. I'm questioning. I'm asking. So you are talking about expert witness testimony? No, I'm talking about. Do you know the rule? I'm not a member of the AMA, so I don't. Okay, I don't great. Read the so rule. he doesn't know. Okay, the rule. move on. You don't know the rule. Oh my God! I love this. You rendered an opinion about. Mr. Oh my God! This De is so good. Reported cognitive impairment. Yes. They're yes. such assholes. What do you use as a baseline? A baseline for processing speed. He doesn't yeah, know for, the rule. For analyzing. Yeah, Mr. he just dispelled De on his debuffs. Before he watched his debuffs. Dispelled on his buffs. What do you use a baseline for that? Oh. Yeah. I mean, I uh -huh. guess my baseline would probably be what I how I've seen him interact in public. I have seen him interact with others. I've seen him interact uh -oh, in, in media. Public. I've seen him interact all and his process speed is certainly not slow. I've seen him do commercials. Isn't his that his against the gold was not rule? slow. At deposition, didn't you say that what you did was compare Mr. Depp's performance in lots of pirate movies? against his deposition testimony what here. I, what I said was I've seen Mr. Depp do uh, apology oh ads. No. I remember he did apology ad with Bad Dog with no delay in processing oh speed. I've no. seen him interact with the media regarding to that. I saw no delay in processing speed. Uh -huh. I'm saying Let me ask you about pirates, though. You compared pirates to the, tech, uh, to, to the depositions given and in this I, case. And I apologize for what I said. Then I misspoke. Okay. You misspoke. You didn't make the comparison right now, just a second ago? Uh-oh. Just a second ago? I, I uh -oh. may have I misspoke. I apologize. You I mean misspoke. a medical diagnosis oh. on a movie? I told you, man. Because you know you can't compare pirates to sworn testimony, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. But you uh, can do, but uh, I'm sorry, you can but wait, judge someone's processing speed. But wait, there's more. At any time. Like, I'm judging yours right now, you're judging mine. We all judge processing speed uh -huh. as a baseline because of what we know about each other. And I would say your process speed right now is not slow. So, Thank I you. mean, we're judging processing speed, I'm just saying to you. Jesus Christ, yeah. these guys are such dickheads. So, no, this is amazing. Mr. Depp's other portrayals. In movies, that oh my God! Of processing speed. Only I've seen him interact w on interviews. He's farming money. It. Yeah, right. when he wasn't in movies. What? Right. But Willie two Walker assholes. Yeah. You. You, you see him in that movie, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. You're <laughs> comparing his processing speed. He's looking at the judge. He's like, "Save me!" But I'm actually gonna have to answer it. Do I have to answer that question, Your Honor? Yeah. <laughs> you have to answer questions. Yes, sir. No, you'll be happy to know I didn't see Willy Wonka as a. I didn't see 21 oh Jump Street when it happened. Or whatever. God. No, I did not. All right. Oh, no. 
You'll, you made uh, just... a very kind admission, I think, early on in your deposition. I'm loving this. This is amazing. You're not claiming to be a better actor than Mr. Depp. <laughs> That's correct, Christ. isn't it? Christ. 100 percent. All right. But with uh, respect oh. to acting, you know that actors actually rehearse for their parts and work on the language, diction, timing of their dialogue oh. as part of that rehearsal? If you say that's true, I'm not an actor. So I, I, don't I don't know. know. What goes on. I can't tell you. I have no what idea do you what think? goes on acting. Okay, but you, you don't know enough about acting to know whether actors rehearse? Sir, I am not an expert in acting. I have no idea Holy what an actor fuck. does. Okay. Holy fuck. Bro, this is... There's, I don't feel bad for him because he's an asshole. During your deposition, what were the circumstances he probably doesn't even care. which you decided to call Mr. Depp an idiot? Ah. Uh, I'm just going to call Mr. Depp an idiot? Uh, yeah, you called Mr. Yeah. Depp an idiot in your deposition. Well, oh, that's I, good. Oh, oh, okay. That's so great. I think it was in the context. Oh, okay. I think it was what a in surprise. The, you probably should read the context of it because I think the context was, is, and I'm trying to think back, here. and I'm trying to think back. Okay, and what I thought it was related to was if you're shit. coming to some deposition, okay, and again, I'm uh -huh. thinking back, so I may, you have it in front of you, I don't, so yeah. I'm thinking back where was he's coming in from Europe for a deposition, yeah. uh, video deposition that yeah. he gave, and he took it overnight the night before, and what I think I said was that if you're going to take a if you're going to do a major thing to or a, a trial that you're involved with, I do think you'd be an idiot to come in the night before. All right. So I didn't call Mr. Depp an idiot. I certainly called that planning an idiot. I didn't call him an idiot. So the words, so I mean he's an idiot, are mistranscribed? No, I'm sure, again, if I said it in that, con if you're just reading one line, one snippet, I'm sure oh it was in my the context God. I just said. But again, you have it in front of you. I Bro, yeah. this uh, guy is... Uh, Idiot, a professional opinion? I wasn't right. <laughs> yeah. Is it a psychiatric It actually opinion? used to be. <laughs> and that follows the, the Goldwater rule. Oh, he's How being a smart ass. Oh, he just said that. I'm not rendering a professional opinion. I Jesus idiot. Christ. This is amazing. So it's not a professional opinion. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it your practice to describe people as idiots? Oh, my. my practice to describe people. Is my practice? No, I don't describe people clinical, my clinical cases as idiots or patients as idiots or victims as idiots. No, sir. But you said for a deposition in this case, so you describe the plaintiff stuff. as an idiot, correct? Uh, but that's... You gave me nine hours of deposition, and uh -huh. if I said the word idiot, it was an idiot in planning. It wasn't making him an idiot. I don't uh -huh. know Mr. Depp's IQ. I don't know his overall functioning. So therefore, if I said it, it was an idiot in planning, which is what I meant to come across as. Ah. Right. So you did say you don't know his overall functioning, but you made some testimony. He did just say that. As to some evaluations oh my God. made relative to his functioning. You would agree with me that it's probably it's a like good idiot? idea. Uh, it used to, to yeah. Think about the questions that are asked you in a court proceeding before answering them. Am I allowed to answer uh -huh. that question? Yes. Okay. So what I meant by function, what I said by function, I believe that his agent reported how late he was showing up to every movie while the cast is waiting for him. I believe that would be an impairment. If I showed up late for that, I would not be here right now, would not have a job. Okay? I believe uh, the thing was in okay. terms of uh, balking out of treatment for substance rehab that his doctor is prescribing for him. So if you're asking me if that's an impairment of functioning, I would say I'm very much substantiated in that. I'm, I'm trying to understand how you got to this notion of cognitive decline. Oh, my God. And I, I thought it was based Bro, at least in part on, on the manner in which he testified. This is bad. On the, I'm sorry, what? On the manner in which he testified. This on is fucking manner, bad. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry I'm, I'm not being difficult. I can't hear. I'm sorry. On what? I was asking you about the cognitive decline yes. testimony that you made. Yes. Uh -huh. And it was my understanding that at least a portion of that testimony that you rendered was that you derived some evidence of cognitive decline from the way Mr. Depp testified. Yes. Okay. All right. What was it? Okay. 
And that's what I said, yes. Right. And so good. all I'm asking you is, you, don't you think it's a good idea when you're in the middle of a court proceeding to answer questions carefully? Again, professionally, we diagnose patients with a neurocog disorder by gross evaluation. Oh my God! The time with cognitive, on the thought that again, oh age my God, controls, I'm just saying, age normative controls does not put a 58 year old gentleman at that. This process. is brutal. That's all I'm saying, That's right. all I said, and you derived this without ever once talking to the man. Me, me, me directly talking to him because I heard because we know how I derived it. So you're talking about me directly talking to him? Yeah, you never talked. No, I never. No, I've never talked. Nah. To him. Right. And th this wizard destroyed exam you gave. This exam. Well, you did talk about Miss uh, uh, Doctor Blaustein, right? Yes, sir. Oh my God. And you understand that the entirety of Doctor Blaustein's uh, medical records are twelve pages of handwritten notes. The important part was what I said. Uh -huh. For me, as an example of cognition, which I'm trying to prove, which is mm -hmm. what you asked me, the important part was what I said. Uh -huh. And that was irrefutable. Uh, the important part is that he, give, he gave the mini mental status exam? Yes, sir. All right. That's Let's talk about the mini mental status exam. Uh, Scored on a 30-point scale, right? Yes. All right. Jesus and it's, it's an exam that basically it's most often used for oh. what, Alzheimer's, dementia, those kind of uh, testing. It, it's an exam that tests cognition in all uh -huh. psychiatric illnesses, not just Alzheimer's. This is bad. It was made for dementia for Alzheimer's, but is the standard, has been the standard for testing cognition in all psychiatric illnesses, uh -huh. substance use disorders included. Okay. Now, someone drop a repair bot for this man. An element it's of bad. That exam that requires drawing, correct? Yes. So you don't know what drawing Mr. Depp did or whether the drawing should have been fully scored. Uh, I, I wasn't questioning his visual or spatial perceptual skills, which is what that does. Right. And you don't know what score Mr. Depp received on the exam. I was very specific. I know three words, not remembering at five minutes. That's all I said. Three words, not remembering five word minutes, and he, he remembered one of them, right? From what I'm saying, he didn't remember any of them. All right. Yeah. All right. Memory on the exam, out of the 30 points, what's it worth? Three. Th three, right? Oh, God. Memory is three out of the 30. Oh. Right? Yeah. Memory is three. Okay. But again, the memory section in and of itself tests memory that's the only question that tests memory the only oh that god tests memory so the memory section tests memory it's the only section you're testified about and for all uh -huh. you know that we're, with respect to the exam that you're going to pass everything on, else mr depp scored 27 out of 30. it would be 28 and that right? would be telling though work. cognitive if you score 27 out of 30 and you miss three points on memory that would be very telling you don't know if mr depp had been up all night the night before that's true Again, you wouldn't there's, expect yep. to not recall any words at three minutes unless there's a cognitive issue. You don't know if Mr. Depp was high. Uh, and again, that's oh, a good point. That's, he again, got you. That could affect memory, but I'm not, I'm not refuting that. I'm not he probably that was high. He could have been high. He could have been drunk. He could have been using cocaine, and that would absolutely affect his memory. Or all of the above. Said. Yes, you're right. So, yep. so ultimately, you have no idea what state Mr. Depp was in at the, at the time he took the exam that you're relying on. Uh, sh uh, short sh of what you just said about drugs and alcohol, okay, oh there shouldn't be God. a reason why 58-year-olds also with strokes and done. other neurocognitive conditions. But short of that, there shouldn't be a really good reason why someone at that age shouldn't come up with at least one. But, but an answer, but, but, but wait a minute, you, you, you started that question with short of drugs and alcohol and spent 35 minutes talking about his use of drugs and alcohol. Isn't that right? Spell reflect. Oh, I, agree. What, I, I thought I agreed with you. I think I agreed. I said oh that my drugs God. and alcohol can absolutely 
affect oh, cognition. No. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I agree, but I'm not sure if that's a holy shit. Problem. I agree with you on that. He's not looking right. at the jury anymore. So you don't know because yeah, now they're arguing one way or the other. Now he's mad. How he scored on the exam, you don't know whether he was at the time on drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. but you're going to rely on it in your testimony to say that he's cognitively impaired. That does sound bad. Which is what we do in clinical medicine, sir. Okay. Okay. You rely on tests that you don't know the, when it was administered, you don't know the score of, of the test, and you don't know the state of the person. This being is bad. Tested, he's getting into a but corner. You rely on it anyway. Again, if we had to know every test, when people get the mini mental state exam, oh we my have God. no idea clinically if they are high, wasted, stoned, stroke. Holy we have no shit. idea. So if you're going to say that, oh. that means everybody needs a drug test before they do a mini mental study, and that's not the standard of care. And I think you know that. So. I think, oh, there it is. He's mad. Let's talk Here a we little go. bit. It's not over. About this word you kept using, correlation. Uh-oh. You know the word, right? Yes. <laughs> correlation and causation aren't the same thing, are they, sir? Correlation, no, they're not the same thing. No, how are they different? Correlation how do they is differ? consistent with causation is direct link. Can you say that again? You were so fast I didn't hear it. I'm sorry about that. Correlation is a risk for something happening causation is a direct link right so just because something's correlated doesn't mean it's going to happen 100 percent right ah, 100%. Like, ah. lung cancer for instance smoking is very highly correlated with lung cancer right yeah and certainly yeah. and there's certainly a link right to lung cancer and smoking right but but not all smokers get lung cancer that's true. Not, no, not all smokers do. No one, like I said, no one fits the curve perfectly. Right. And the you, wizard's getting they, into a corner. Testimony to, and to, to oh, all, no. of us, all of us do this. All of us do that. Oh, you, no. Your, your suggestion about all of us is you're just looking at the world as a sample and not uh -huh. at any particular individual, correct? Oh. What I'm looking at is. is that I am not talking about an individual, how they can or cannot be resistant. What I'm saying is invariably, when you substances, this is going to happen. Now, is there a 0.05% chance there that someone goes. who does? My, yeah, he's all oh, Mike. But is that medical degree of certainty? Bro. Oh, he's getting mad. percent chance of what, sir? I'm, I, of developing, of developing oh. symptoms. If you're using excessively, eventually he's you're going to develop symptoms. Okay. He's molding, yep. But risk factors tell us nothing about any one particular individual, do they, sir? Uh-huh. No, no, again, risk factors tell us nothing except that they this have it. Bad. They're at a higher likelihood of developing it. That's right. what this is bad. But you did a, a whole litany of risk, risk factors relative to IPV. Uh-huh. Yes. Right. And none of those risk fa factors tell us anything specifically about an individual. Other, right, other than they're at higher risk, right? Right. Yes. Um, yes. So someone could have every single risk factor for IPV and never commit IPV, right? That's true. It would be, again, if you're going to say a medical degree of probability, the answer is they will. But if you're saying uniformly, the answer is no. Oh, they will. Medical right. degree. IPV can occur without substance abuse. Oh, sure. Someone can abuse substances without ever perpetrating IPV. Again, absolutely. But, again, you are saying different than what I said. Ah. I did not say abusing substance. I said substance use disorder. You are, oh. Those are two different things. Because there are surely people who use substances that do not engage in any violence, do not become psychotic. Oh, my God. So and that's absolutely. equally true of people who have substance abuse disorder. There are certainly people who have substance uh -huh. abuse disorder who don't commit IPV, correct? They are saying people who have substance use disorders, the majority of them, over 50% do. So uh -huh. over 50% do. So that's medical. So, so my, the answer is... Yes. As you said, not what? everyone who smokes gets lung cancer. 
Holy so, shit. There are holy fucking shit people you you said it was over 50 so so you'd say 40 percent of the people who have substance substance abuse disorder don't commit ipv and those are the ones that do not have that's IPV a lot risk factors though, right so that's a lot wait, wait a minute don't... isn't sub substance abuse disorder and ipv risk factors? Oh, yeah. uh -huh. these are other people that have don't have other risk factors right right mm-hmm but again, we're talking about people in general. You don't know anything about any particular individual as to whether anybody's going to commit IPV. If statistics uh. follow through, all we can say is more than 50%, 70% will. If you combine more risk factors you have, uh -huh. the more likely you're going to develop the illness. If you smoke cigarettes once, that might not correlate to lung cancer. If you smoke it chronically, that might. Right. So that's so all we're I'm saying. talking about individuals here. You either oh, have lung God. cancer or you don't. God, right? if you're smoking. He's trying to right. use the right. statistics. You either commit IPV or you didn't. That that I either mean, could be it. Yeah, you either did or you didn't. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you took some issue with me because I was asking about substance abuse generally. Oh, now it's getting personal. And you okay, here we to go. Talk about the the disorder. I'm. Uh -huh. I asked you earlier about narcissistic personality disorder, mm -hmm. and you, you haven't made that diagnosis. You've just talked about the traits, right? Yes. And anybody, somebody can have these narcissistic personality traits and substance abuse disorder and never commit IPV, right? That's true. So, along that line, right. about about 80 to 90 percent of pay people who commit IPV have sure. a personality disorder. So the answer is less than about 10 percent obviously do not. That's an inverse statistic. Right. You should compare about the amount of people that have the disorder that there commit are IPV. More it's deliberately disingenuous. Close links with IPV for borderline personality disorder than narcissistic uh, nice personality try. disorder. Correct, sir? Um, not going to agree with uh -huh. that. No, nope. I'm not saying there are more links. I would say to you, there are absolute. If you're asking me, there are links. The answer is absolutely. If you're saying to me more, I can show studies. Say yes, so studies say that. That has not been absolutely definitively correlated. No. Uh huh. No, absolutely not. Yeah. And now what? He's getting nervous now. Look at his face. Oh, he's nervous. He's fucking stressed. He's straight. He's pissed. MDMA. Oh. What is it? Uh, what is it? Ecstasy. Yeah. And what's the normal dosage of ecstasy for people who use ecstasy? Mm -hmm. Again, I couldn't tell you the quote-unquote normal dose because, honestly speaking, no one, no one knows what they're getting when they're using it, right? It's not regulated, so. But... The effects of ecstasy enhance sen sense of well-being? Yeah. At low doses, the answer is yes. I'm going to gather when you're using it at higher doses and develop tolerance, you develop the sympathomimetic effects, which are not so enhanced well-being. Increased extroversion, that's, that's a symptom. Again. Just walking at away. At you are 100% right. Here at we go. low amounts, you are 100% right. It is an attactogen. We feel closer to people. That's what people uh -huh. use it say. They feel close to people, warmth to people, uh, 100%. Yeah. But with continual use and higher doses, it could be fatal. Uh-huh. Right. So that's not, that's not well-being. I don't know if I'd call that well-being. So continued use at higher doses, MDMA can be fatal, correct? Correct. Yeah. What if you took 8 to 10 tablets of MDM MDMA? If, what if you took and ate the, again, he doesn't know how big the tablets are. It's, it's very hard to say that. You don't know what it's, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? There's uh, a standard. With, okay, you, you can't just say, hey, let me just take eight to ten. But the wizard destroyer doesn't happens. care. That's, that's He's going to make him say it so anyway. What I would say to you, again, he doesn't because care. substances of abuse are unpredictable. They are not regulated. No one knows what they're going to. No one apps has any idea. Uh -huh. Whether it's going to cause this empathic and tactogen effect at very low doses, 
or is it going to cause the sympathomimetic, I'm sorry, increase? Mm -hmm. um, uh, He's uh, laughing. Like, it's like a stimulant, like cocaine. Something we Checks about. the like, clock. No one knows what's Holy going to happen. Shit. It's not regulated. And no one knows if you're Holy using other shit. substances either. My, <laughs> Checks the clock stuff. while he's talking. Or if you mix it with alcohol. Or if you mix it with alcohol. Uh huh. No but, one knows if it's going to be potentially worse. Right. But it, this is Holy a potentially shit. lethal combination. Eight to ten MDMA this, tablets okay. and this alcohol. Is a, this is a potentially toxic combination. Ah. Can it kill you? Yeah, I mean, it is a potentially toxic combination. That's true. Ever heard of someone cutting off their own finger on MDMA? Have I ever heard of it? Yeah. Uh, no, I can only give you one hadn't, example. Hadn't seen that one before. Okay. I ha eh? I, hadn't so, seen that one before. Sarah. He looks at the judge. That one <laughs> puts you I hadn't seen that one before, right? have you? Uh, if you want to phrase a barbiturate putting you to sleep, then the answer is yes. Yeah, you heard Mr. Uh, Mr. Depp talking about sometimes being on the nod, right? <laughs> and, and again, I think I, expl I think I explained Sarah well very well this morning. Good. I'm going to ask him a few more questions. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Here we you go. You're making references to street value. Why were you doing that? Because that's why people with substance use disorder use quetiapine and Seroquel. Say it again. I'm sorry. That's why people who use quetiapine and or slash Seroquel can get has street value. Why are you talking about, about that? So like in the implication that he sells you drugs. Said that Mr. Depp. <laughs> yeah, I love had a that. There are many substance use disorder patients who have prescriptions for Adderall and quetiapine uh -huh. from their doctor, and that doesn't mean they're brutal. not getting high out of it. That doesn't take much. Doctors like to believe what patients have to say. They're not yeah. going to go in there being uh, expert witness testimony. No. All I'm telling you is that in people who have substance use disorder, it is not uncommon, and the thought was initially that because quetiapine was not addicting, that it's safe to give in people with substance use disorders, when in fact, we absolutely know it has three values. Absolutely know that for a fact. Right, but my point about this is you made a, a, a bunch of testimony about street value, but you knew at the time you made the testimony that Mr. Depp, in fact, had a prescription. Oh. He also had a prescription for oxycodone and oxycodone. Is that, does that count? Because that's also probably not a good thing. Oh, see, the implication. Just because be you have a prescription. Yeah. Doesn't mean that Mr. Doesn't... Depp would agree with you it wasn't a good thing. Just because you have a prescription doesn't mean you can't abuse it. No, I'm not suggesting you could, you're abusing it. I'm, I'm just wondering why your testimony was in any way tied to street value when every single drug you referenced, Mr. Depp had legally. Again, you can have prescription substance abuse, and we know that, correct? No, I shouldn't be asking you that. We can have prescription substance use disorders. <laughs> He's just going to start talking. <laughs> he just starts talking to the jury. Living in right now, we can have that. That's not <laughs> Unfortunate, but not. He's just so not great. Not. This guy is amazing. So, Sarah Quill, Flip the script. Yeah, now I'm talking. a sleeping agent when used off label. When I saw what? Sleeping agent, Sarah Quill, when used off label. When used off label, it's used. I can be used sleeping agent, yes. Right. So, Mr. Depp's use of Seroquel could account for some of the photos we saw in this, pic in, in this trial where he's asleep in a chair. Again, what I would say to you is that if you have a substance use disorder, you are using it to be knocked out. Yes, I agree. And I'm, but I'm not sure at the end of the day yeah. you should have vomitus over you either. Cause I've never seen Seroquel do that. Ah. So, when he was passed out in the chair, he also had vomitus over him. I've never seen Seroquel do that ever. What a Neurotin. Uh oh, uh oh. Um, drugs you testified about. Now he's talking shit. That one's also uh, prescribed, right? Yes, it is. And what's the prescription for that? Uh, what's it used for? Oh no. And what's its indication or what's its yeah, use for? Oh indication? no. Its indication is for seizures. Here it may we go. Have no pain indication. Again, I'm not a neurologist, so I can't tell you exactly if it does. But, oh, but God. it's chronically used off label for pain. It was ice it's cream. used off label for anxiety. You're right. And what's its effect? Yeah, it was ice cream. That's You're another, right. I forgot about that's that. That's another one that'll put you to sleep, right? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, sure. 100%. Mm -hmm. Right. And. You made reference to a picture. That Here we go. There's been testimony around the around that picture that Mr. Depp fell asleep with 
ice cream in his hand. That's not vomitous, right? I, I was told it was vomitous. Okay. By who? He's just, um, he's just laughing. <laughs> yep, there we the go. That Mr. Depp. Uh, By who? Yeah, who told time, you that? He uses an earpiece. I was, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was read told yes. that, yeah. Okay. Oh, you read um, that. Did you read the testimony of Mr. Wyatt, who told you what was being pumped into that earpiece? Yeah, I mean, if I, if I remember right, I mean, it was, I think it was lines, right? No, it was music. It was music, not his line? Yeah. Okay. So so what? If, if Mr. Depp was listening to music rather than being fed his lines, what? does that change your opinion as to his cognitive function? If he was uh. never fed his lines through the earpiece, which I know he was, but read he was. How do we just... That may have been that example. Mr. Wyatt may have said that it was music. I guess the question is, were you having the music... During the during the actual talking of your lines, is that what you're saying to me? Well, you know, if if you can do two things at once, that's a pretty high cognitive function, isn't it, sir? You know, I would assume so. Yeah. Divided attention is something humans have a lot of trouble in. So, for instance, yeah. we have trouble driving and putting on the you know using our uh, cell phones and direct. So, divided attention True. humans actually I've are not very good at. I'll, yeah. I'll put that out there. But Mr. In general, not but, just Mr. Depp in general. But, but Mr. Depp is pretty good at acting. You, 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 you acknowledge that early on. Absolutely. Well, better than me, so I know that. Because you don't okay. act. In fact, you don't know about acting. A a You're the right. The wizard. I have no idea about acting. Destroyer. Holy shit. How prevalent the shit. use of pieces are in acting. Again, I don't. I, I oh, my God. Irrespective of the fact you know nothing about acting, you've testified that Mr. Depp's use of an earpiece is somehow a cognitive deficit. So if I was giving a lecture and I was fed my lines, I would think there's a cognitive deficit. So I'm, and maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm Hollywood wrong. stars get lines fed to them through earpieces all the time, and I, I don't know. I, I, that could be said. It sounded to me to be unusual if you're doing a movie and you don't know the lines. But mm -hmm. like you said, I'm just judging into what I do with lectures. Yeah. And that would never happen. If you gave lectures, you wouldn't use an earpiece. Maybe I'm wrong. You're not going to tell anybody how to act. I'm sorry, what was the question? Hmm? I, I said if you gave lectures, uh -huh. you wouldn't use an earpiece, but you're not telling anybody how to act. Yes. Right, I would not use an earpiece during lectures. Right. But I, again, I don't know what the standard for a care of how the standard is Hollywood is for that. I have no idea. Uh huh. Your use, uh, your testimony about the use of an earpiece as um, maybe you were wrong. You're comfortable with the fact that you may have made a mistake there? No, because I think in the basis of what I've read about it, I'm comfortable no. about it. I don't believe that actors are routinely given their entire script through earpieces. I find that hard to believe. But it was music. Yeah. But, and, and but not one whit of evidence that ever, this ever happened I, here. I guess what I said. I just said I find it hard to believe. I didn't say it. Ha I said I find it hard to believe. Why is that hard That's to believe? I uh, yeah, but, but what you found hard to believe, sir, was that every every line of the script was was pumped through an earpiece where did you ever huh. get the idea that ever that occurred that's what i have been that's what i read and the uh, court review the court yeah. evidence, that's where i got it from this and, is um, bad holy you know where, shit whether marlon brando used an earpiece whether isn't he dead <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no he does not use one now no i i, I, I used the past tense, so. oh i'm sorry uh i again I know nothing. I will concede to you. I know oh nothing God. about it. I will concede to you. If that is the he standard, doesn't use one now. He's that dead. Thing, then I apologize, and that was wrong on my part. If that's the standard, <laughs> I'm wrong. I don't know. Okay. This is unbelievable. Let's go with that. No further questions. Right. Let's go with How that. A, a, a bit. You may want to take. All right. Let's go ahead and break for lunch, then, ladies and gentlemen. Again, do not do any outside research. Do Jesus. Not discuss your testimony with anybody, okay? Oh my God! Is it? No, he doesn't use one. He's dead. Holy fuck! And like he, and then he decides to end it on that. That's the best fucking thing. Oh my God. This is odd. Like, 
What the fuck just happened? Like, yeah, this... All right. So let's come back at 155 then. All right. Is that fine? All right. 155. All right. Wow. I, like, dude, that was fucking brutal. Holy shit. It's like, do we have this in politics? Bro, I told you. It's like they have that lawyer in there. And all he does is he just dismantles the experts. Like, that's all he does. He's like, you're an expert in this? Oh, really? Do you know everything about it? He's like, no. All right. Well, see, I told you. So do you, do you know this about this certain thing that could have happened? Well, I, no, I can't be sure about that. Yeah, you're not sure about anything, are you? Uh-huh, that's what I thought. <laughs> it's just... It, it's, it's like he's like he's... It's like he's trained... He's like a trained destroyer of, of, of these experts. Like, that's it. He just can't even, like, they can't get anything out there. He's a Death Knight lawyer. Yeah, I mean, holy fuck. Have you seen Johnny Depp's brain? Well, no. Well, then how do you know what's in it? Like, God. The Witness Vanquisher? Yeah, this is amazing. Love to see how much fun you have. I, I love seeing it because you know what? I bet the guy that's up there isn't even mad. I bet he's enjoying this. Because finally, he can be an obnoxious asshole to somebody else. Because, yeah, he didn't even care. Like, it wasn't even a problem. Like, he's happy. Yeah, this, yeah, he's enjoying this. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. He just wants a good 1v1. Yeah, this is amazing. Johnny's reaction was perfect. Like, the Marlon Brando one. Holy fuck. Did you know he uses the earpiece? Isn't he dead? Like... <laughs> I just, I, wow.